that's a part of who he is. Look up the quote where Donald Trump talks about his German blood and how great stuff that is. It's out there. You can find it. When we are honest with ourselves and get past the shock of the president of the United States saying these things, it's not hard to figure out who Donald Trump is. We know who he is. He's told us who he is. He's proud of who he is. Get back to our phone lines, and uh, I think Dwayne is online too. Let's try Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne, good afternoon. Hey, Cliff, well, first of all, I just want to say I'm so thankful to your brother, man, because if the call the park said it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to talk to you. The reason I say that not only that, I have two sisters. One sister donated her kidney to her ex husband, and my sister, my older sister, donated her kidney to her son. So I am so thankful for them, your brother, and more so. Just be able to talk to you today, my brother. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate the call. I appreciate the kind words, Dwayne. And uh, as I said, it was January 29th of 1999 that my younger brother, Mike Russell, gave me his kidney. And uh, without question, it allowed me to still be alive here today. It allowed me to uh, achieve some things in life that I have not achieved yet. Uh, you know, my, my brother Mike was one of my heroes before he gave the kidney. And uh, even more so now. So when we get closer to the time, I want to make sure that uh, I uh, honor that. And I appreciate your call a lot. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Um, yeah. Very thankful for my brother, Mike. And uh, I got a little emotional there for a second. Appreciate you, brother. All right. Let's see. Next time, one more call. We do. And uh, let's make that Joseph, who is on line five. Hey, Joseph. Good afternoon to you. Hey, good afternoon, Cliff. You know, I... I listen to your show, but I'm trying to understand. You said reservations was part of rep for the indigenous people. Did I get that correct? I'm saying that the, the Native Americans, as poorly and horribly as they were treated, even the federal government left them some lands for them to live on and to own that are sovereign amongst themselves. Now, they used to own it all. They, it was, uh, you know... Uh, poisoned and killed and slaughtered and moved and diseased uh, by these Europeans to essentially obliterate them from the land. But once that process of manifest destination was accomplished, there were still some reservations for uh, Native Americans to own and control. Black folks didn't even get that. I don't have to worry about no police. They're inside. I got to Reservations compared to what they had. Yes. Oh no, I understand. The, the lack of, I mean, it's horrible for these folks. No, I agree. And, but they also have land, and if you look at the casino economy and what they have done for a lot of these Native American um, reservations, it has certainly been an influx of money. Now, what they do with that money. And what the politics are, I don't know. But I know black folks don't even have that. Hey, I see he's going. All right, let me get out of here. When we come back, if you're a sports fan, if you're a basketball fan, all right, this is Friday. I'm feeling like some hoops. I'm doing another Detroit Mercy game tomorrow, a home game against Oakland at 4 o'clock. Hope you'll be able to tune in and check it out. But this ongoing conversation, who was the greatest basketball player from Detroit in history? Who are the greatest hoopers to come from Detroit? We're going to have Eric Pate on deck. We're going to have that conversation. If you know anything about hoops, if you think you know anything about hoops, give us a call. We're going to have this conversation. I'm going to keep a list. I'm going to keep a running tally, and we're going to see who wins this argument. We'll be right back. This is 910 AM Superstation, the future of radio. Yeah. 